we'd just show you how to mask up your canopy so you can spray it and when you do you'll get a nice clean crisp lined canopy that looks fantastic in my view but if you ain't got the ability to spray it because you ain't got an airbrush and that I'm also going to on this I'll do one with the kind of uh, the masking on so you can see for spraying I'll do one with a masking on and I'll, I'll brush paint it so you can see how good you can get it using the same style but brush painting and this one won't have any masking on but I'll brush paint it and I'll show you how good I can get this one by any excess that comes off onto the rest of the canopy I can get it off without damaging the canopy first off you're going to want this is my preferred one Tamiya masking tape but you're going to want some kind of masking tape if you ain't got Tamiya I have got one that I use which is more of an industrial one and you get a lot of it's frog tape but I'll be honest, and if you look it's the delicate surface so you're not going to damage this canopy with it but I'll be completely honest with you it's not as good as this this is just a little tiny bit more tackier and a little bit better but that's what I use obviously your canopy <laughs> don't be doing no note if you've not got a canopy and then the craft knife and the craft knife you want I use a sharp pointed blade you can see there it's a 10A it's one Morton but you want it to be a brand new blade so you can probably just see there I've definitely cut stuff with this one it still looks nice sharp but I'm not going to take that as a guarantee so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this blade because you really really need it to be super super sharp so it makes it a lot easier so I'll change this and then we'll get these set up and then I'll we'll hopefully get them painted get it all done and you'll see each one and you can make your own minds up which you would prefer to do or if what I've shown you is a brand new method for you then great you've got something new to have a go at and see what you think of it but before I change this just a quick one I'd be grateful if you'd subscribe and like the video even better once you've subscribed click that bell and if you do you'll get notified every time I stick a video up thanks a lot let's get this blade changed so I took a piece of masking tape doesn't have to be a giant piece as long as it covers all of this canopy we start on one side and we will gently press it in and do not press super hard if you press super hard you'll crack the canopy easily done We'll go over the other side, press that one in, and then back to this side, and that one. And that's now all the main three sides on this one done. There is a bit of a front one, but we'll worry about that once we've got that done. Next off, trusty old cocktail sticks, or toothpick, whichever you want to say. And you're going to grab one of these, and what you do is, you're running that down the edge of the actual pane so that's a square pane there, there's a little there you go where an a, a, a area or something like that's feeding through that one but so you've got it all pressed in that's lovely next one and you're doing this to every pane where you've got this masking over once you've got them all done, like that, and you're happy. There's another one there I can get, yeah. You go all around the side, you do them all like this. Covers it all in. Once you're happy with what you've got there, as you can see, you've got it pressed in, you can see the edges. Your super sharp knife, and you're going to start with top corners or whatever. Just steadily work your way down. You are not trying to cut this as in through the plastic. You are just trying to faintly cut the actual masking tape. And that masking tape is not hard to cut. I tell you now. It's as easy as anything with a sharp knife like that. 
and you can easily cut your fingers as well if you're not careful doing this so nice steady gentle and I haven't got the most steadiest of hands not that I'm getting on I'm a builder so it ain't easy sometimes so nice and steady I know it's tedious but it's an easy enough little cut you got to do there now now where it's like that I'm just going to go around it just to double make sure that we get around that little bit there about that way and that should be enough now for that there if it's not when you're pulling it you just got to nick it a little bit again what I'll do is I'll go all around all of this on both of them and then I'll show you taking it off of the actual uh, thing so that all you get is left on the pins so I've gone round it now it's all cut pressed in a couple of places there is a piece at the front yet I'm gonna have to go again because you can see it's folding up so it's never going to go right so don't bother trying to fight it just put another tiny piece on after I'll show you but you can see here peeling up and it can be an idea to I'll just get them now so I have a pair of tweezers when I get them out of the drawer that is here we go a pair of tweezers just to help tease up and you can you see it's already starting to want to peel off of the face there although it's coming there that corner's not quite got. So if you just press it back, easy done. And then you just nick around that corner. Now, grab it with my tweezers. See? Come off lovely there. It's coming up there okay. And then what you try to do, you try to get all these biggest areas first. And we'll go again on that side. Seems to be working there okay coming across again there and you're working it from one part to another don't just grab it and pull it up you'll just pull all that masking off but you can see there I'm just started to take it up there in that little corner there so press it back in do it and just run your blade back over where it's trying to grip and not come up hopefully this time let's come it's trying to leave that bit behind. Did I not cut that one? Not sure I did. But no. Yep. Come on. Let's get that knife out of the way before I cut my fingers off. And then we'll steady. Yep. And it's looking okay. It's looking good. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. One canopy mast. Well, all but that bit. And all you get in is you're just going to grab another little piece of whatever and just stick it over that. Oh, in fact, let me just cut a bit off of this one here. It's a bit of an old scrappy one we had earlier. Doing another model of what? And then I thought I'd do this while we're doing that one. Right, there. And all you're going to do is go back over that bit there. We'll just cut that one out. If that's alright. Seems to. Oh, that's come up. Put back in. A bit too quick there. Should have been a bit more careful. Trying to rush it a bit for the video so that uh, you're not messing about just watching me cutting away at masking tape. <laughs> it's not the most exciting thing for you to watch, is it? Again, it's coming up there. Come on, release it. Be good. Yes. Gotcha. You can see there. Just press them in once you've done it, just to make sure that they're nicely sealed down on the edges. She's done. Now this, to protect it, and you've got to be careful doing this as well. I know that everything I'm saying is about careful, careful, because canopies are so, so easily damaged. So this is why I do this. I'll get a bit of blue tack or anything like it will do, and I'll flatten it out so it's roughly the shape of the cockpit. Not 
perfect but just roughly once it is I'll just press the canopy onto it like that and now you can see you've got somewhere you can hold it and you're not touching it and what you're doing here if you look you're protecting that edge so when you come to spray it or paint it less chance again especially with spray to be honest less chance on any spray going up behind and getting onto the inside of your canopy so you don't wreck it there's one canopy that's ready for painting now so I'll put that there I've got that one to do and then we've got this one which is a uh, one I'm going to unbrush paint right, I've got a bit of humbrel fur to here it's what I had from my last kit that was a start kit paint and I put it into a jar like so put a bit of thinners in a bit of retarder or flow improver as you want to call it I've got a bit in here now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray these two uh, this one sorry and this one is the one that, like I say I'll spray and then I'll use the exact same paint there to paint that with a brush and then I'll do the other one where is it? There she is. I'll do her with an, a brush as well, but I'll do it without any can of, uh, any masking. So you can see the difference and see whether it's worth masking up in your view. So, put this green on. And you know you've done a good coat when you can't see any yellow masking behind. should be fine that. So I put that to dry and it wants to properly dry this so you want to believe in it I would have said for at least four or five hours just to make sure that the paint ain't going to peel up with the actual uh, edge. I preferably do it at night and then I'll do them again uh, take the thing off the next day that way they've had at least 12 hours. But that's that done there. Now this one as I said what I'll do with this and I will get for this I think I'll just get a normal uh, umbral brush normal umbral brush no special it's a number two Pop that. and I'll just paint this I don't someone right so this brush is rubbish I'll tell you now I can see that's better and you're just gonna go around the edges Hopefully you'll get it where you've got everywhere nicely done. I'm not going to use this number two brush to do the other one where I'm painting by hand. That much I know for sure. Because I'll have it everywhere. I've got it everywhere now near enough. Luckily there's masking there to stop it and just smooth it all out best you can. So it go over a lot. Yeah. So that's that one. That will take longer to dry because airbrushing one always dries quicker. Now this one I will use one of my really fine brushes. This one here. Nice little Winsor Newton one. This one's a Winsor Newton double zero. In fact, I'll get the paint off of there for that. So for that, too much on there. I, I hope I'm not going to stain it. I shouldn't do. It's drying my fingers. I'm sure on it. I just always, I just run around the edge like this. You normally have to go over it a couple of times like this because it's so thin a paint you're putting on. Like that. And The problem is you can't hold them half of the time. What I'll do is I'll put the paint all the way around on it like this because this is boring to watch I think. So I'll do this. Like you can see there. I'll probably have to go a couple more times. Yeah, it's not bad. That's as good as you're getting from me with my hands today. 
But what I will do, I'll get another cup of it, and I'll put some here. I have spilled. I've accidentally gone over. Oh no, can't get it off. But hopefully, me, m what I'll show you will help. So I'll let that bit dry on there, and then I can paint the other bits as they go round. And then we'll come back to it when all of these have dried and we're ready for taking stuff off. Put that down there before I drop it all over. We'll see you in a minute. But you can do your edges, you can do anything you want just to try and smarten it up a little bit. Like that. It does help. It does make them a little bit neater sometimes. Like that. Anywhere where you think you've over painted a little bit with brush. You can just bring a little bit back at times. But it's not a bad canopy. I'm not going to knock that. Then you've got, this is the first brush painted one. Uh, masking one. This is the brush painted one. So you just peel the edge back a little bit. Grab it with tweezers and off she comes. Do a couple of them so you can see. You're just trying to flick the the actual masking. You don't want to scratch the canopy, you've got to be careful. But I'll take that uh, blue tack out. I've got to be careful doing that, I know, because I broke a canopy doing that. I pulled too hard and too quick and it just cracked. But, uh, that's pretty damn good if you ask me. It's a nice, clean edge. It's pretty decent, that. And then we've got, obviously, I'll just take that off out of there. Come on, don't you break. There. This is the one that we airbrushed. Now this is the this is my preferred method, but I'll be honest with you, I don't think there's a lot of difference between that and that. But this is my preferred, and I do like my airbrushing anyway, so. But I find it's a, a lot neater, smoother finish, I think, with airbrush than uh, without. But if you thin your paints down enough anyway, you should get a nice neat finish with uh, a brush. Come on, yep. I hate doing this, you get it all over the place, man. You can find a bit stuck all over. That's the two like that. I can say there's not a lot of difference. So what I will do now, I'll take the rest of them off and then we'll compare all three. Right. I've got them all cleaned off, as in I've got the stuff at so we can see through onto this white paper I could clear the out as well. But I'll bring it up to you, you can see, it's a bit easier. You can see with the airbrushed one, very nice, clean paint lines. And you can see there, it's, I'd say, it's the best of the three, but that's my personal view. But it's nice, it's a good, clean cockpit, go well on any. The only thing I will say, and I, I've, it's just happened to me, oh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, is there if we bring it round can you I don't know if you can just see it but there is on that little leg there going down there's a little bit of paint come off already now normally when I do anything like that once I've airbrushed it I will spray it with a, a, a varnish a gloss or a, a matte one even a semi gloss one but I do that to protect the paint that wouldn't have happened if I'd have done it and I would advise anybody else that's doing it to do the same but you, don't happen as much when you do the brush on with a canopy that you've masked. But you can see it's not quite as good as the other, but I'll be honest with you, it's not far off. It's it's very it's decent in the sense that you'd happily use that and you wouldn't have a problem with it. I would anyway. And then you've got your hand brush one, which is here. And I could do a bit more work on that, in all honesty. A bit more scraping away at the edges. It's not the worst. But it's certainly, when you look at that one and this one, and you look at them together, and I know they're slightly different, but it's the different canopy, uh, sort, well, bit lines on for the marks for the aircraft, but you look at that and you can see 
the difference between an airbrush one and just brush painted without the masking. I do think the masking makes a massive difference. But that's 172 scale. And now if you're talking 148 scale, I do my 148s differently. I use the different types of masking tape. I use the one that's, you can bend it round curves, this one. Which is a damn good masking tape, that one. I'll be honest with you. It's not as sticky as normal masking tape, but it's very good. And then I use the normal thin Tamiya stuff like that and then what I tend to do is I just go around the edges on them and then I fill that in with some uh, liquid plastic from Vallejo uh, uh, liquid mask sorry from Vallejo that I find brilliant a way to do it and it's better than this but these are that small you can't do that really with them it's impossible I find but this is my method I hope that it uh, helps you a bit if you find that you'd like to have a go at that and you find it a lot better just give us a mention and say if you've got a better method, also please give give me a method, tell us what it is that you think's better than this, and then if I've never done it, I can have a go at it. I like trying new stuff with modelling, and I, I think every modeler does, to be honest. But thanks for watching. I'll try and get a 148 scale version up when I get the chance of 132, but when I get a chance to do them is when I'm going to get more 148 and 32 scale kits done. But for 172, hope this helps you. See you later.